to our local candidate interviews on WFJA and WWGP Radio, brought to you by Sand Hills Broadcasting and Brick Capital Video. We're here at the WFJA studio. I'm Matt Garrett, your host today for the North Carolina State Senate District 12 and the North Carolina House District 51 candidate interviews. I remind our listeners that today through Thursday, each Mm -hmm. afternoon, these interviews will air live on WFJA and WWGP, as well as stream on the WFJA website. Videos of these candidate interviews will be posted each evening on the WFJA website. We now begin with the first of two interviews for candidates running for the North Carolina House of Representatives here in District 51. We start this with the incumbent, um, Republican John Sauls. John, welcome to WFJA and these interviews. Good to see you, sir. Glad to be here, be with you and your listeners. Okay, great. You ready to jump in and get going with some questions? We are. All right, let's do it then. Um, first of all, <clears throat> although you have been um, our incumbent and have been, you know, certainly in the newspapers and around, and we most people have seen you, know you, there are probably some people out there listening uh, or maybe watching this video that don't really know anything about John Saul. So, John, if you'd start off, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and then why are you seeking re-election to the North Carolina House? Uh, thank you, Dr. Garrett. Uh, first of all, I'm uh, John Sauls. Uh, we live, uh, my wife Marty and I, we have three grown children. Uh, my son's a pastor and both our, uh, my youngest daughter married a pastor and Michelle, our middle daughter, is, uh, is, serves in our ministry. She's uh, a beautician, but she's uh, very active, her and her husband, in, the, in our ministry. Um, I pastored Crossroads Church for 21 years. Uh, we started from scratch down in Broadway and, and God gave us a vision of a thousand in a town of a thousand. And uh, six years ago, my son left IBM, became the pastor, and uh, I went, uh, I basically retired from there. I, during my time uh, in pastoring, God called me to uh, politics too, which made no sense. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I was elected in 98 to, uh, for a four year term on the Lee County Commission as vice chair. And during those four years, the church doubled in attendance. Uh, and then God called me to run for the house, which made no sense because mm-hmm. the church had doubled in attendance. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, so I obeyed and went and it doubled those four years. <laughs> so in those six, I did not run again because of the church literally had gotten where I had to be there. And so uh, then I was gone uh, for 10 years and ran again in 16 and I've been back uh, three terms now. Wow. Uh, wow. Okay. Um, why are you seeking reelection? Well, we've been blessed. Um, I've got some great committees. Um, I am chair of commerce. I'm the sole chair. Many have co-chairs, and I'm sole chair of commerce, and I'm a vice chair of community college. Community college is my number one priority. There's a lot of priorities, but community college there. I call them the redheaded stepchild of, of education, and you, you, you were the I president spent a little of the time there. I did. So uh, uh, we have one of the best community college systems in the nation. Uh, but we were ranked uh, before our last raises we just gave uh, was 47th in the nation on instructor pay. Thank God we did get 5% this, this go around. And that was a, my, myself and Representative Hurley from Randolph sponsored a bill for 7%. But, but knowing that uh, it would probably get cut, but, so we wanted to be the minimum was 5 mm-hmm. So we had to take what we could get, which was 5 but that was better than been getting, been getting like two or three mm-hmm. percent. Uh, well, well, as a long time community college person myself, I just want to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, so, you know, some folks talk about term limits uh, for legislative bodies and, you know, you've been there. How many years total? You were just saying it. What does that add up to? Uh, uh, this is my 10th year. Okay. I'm going, running for my uh, sixth term. All right. What do you think are the advantages and are there any disadvantages for, you know, long term versus term limits? Um, first of all, <laughs> if you 
you for it. We don't have much time, but I'll tell you this real fast. Okay. What I think they ought to do is make these, uh, they, the pay for a state legislator is $13,950 a year. Mm. Now you get $104 a day per diem, but a lot of those guys are, are coming from the mountains and the coast, and even myself driving back and forth every day, I'm wearing out my vehicle and a lot of expenses. Uh, $13,950 is really a shame. Uh, I mean, and uh, what it should be is, uh, they, I think we should uh, raise the pay to the average of a teacher salary, make it four year terms, if money's a problem in politics, we're having to raise money every other year, mm -hmm. which is ridiculous. You you get elected, you serve a year, and you're filing again, right. like I'm doing now. And uh, and then I wouldn't care if it was three or four term limits. I'd say four, probably four. You got you get the people really have term limits. They get to vote their people in or out. They can vote me out, or vote me in, or vote the next guy in. So there's an argument both ways. You don't want to lose really great people that are experts in that particular area. I found out real quick, you go to Raleigh, you're not an expert in everything. Right. So you, you rely on a lot of people with knowledge that has it, and you put your input in. Uh, so it's kind of a mixed bag. Um, uh, the way we are right now, I'd say no. Uh, let the people do it. Mm -hmm. but okay. I'd like to go into it one day deeper. Okay. Um, as North Carolina is recovering from all that was brought on during COVID-19, um, what aspects of our economy do you think still present the most challenges? And how do you think our state legislature has been dealing with that? Well, I think we've done the best we could under very trying times. Uh, our un uh, economic, I mean, uh, Employment Security Commission uh -huh. processed more claims in three months than they did in six years. Think about that. People were hurting so bad. I had one gentleman call me from around barbecue precinct. He said, Representative Sauls, I've, my wife and I have maxed out both our credit cards. I've got $10 in my pocket and I don't, that's all I have to, to, to make it. And so I called a good friend of mine that I'd served with that was over it, and I uh, actually called the Employment Security Commission. He got a hold of it and got the guy some help. I was get I was getting three hundred or more emails a a day. Wow! Of people needing help. Wow! And uh, I woke up one Sunday morning and cut on my iPhone, and at five oh eight a.m. Sunday morning, somebody had te had, uh, text me or emailed me about how bad it was. It was bad. We did a heck of a job under extraneous and unheard of situations. Man. Um, and of course the economy is still recovering from that. Um, it, you know, it's led to other kinds of issues, supply shortages, et cetera. Uh, and then we've also run into the issue that a lot of service sector, you know, restaurants, uh, convenience stores, they can't find employees right now. Um, and that all seems to have really developed during this COVID situation. Uh, do you have any other thoughts on, is there anything the state legislature needs to be involved in and helping work this out? Or what are your thoughts about it, John? Um, well, a, a number of people are coming uh, to bring in jobs. So um, we've got a lot of people that, are, that have left. To work. Sadly, I mean, not sadly, some people have chosen to leave. They've decided to, I had my, uh, I have a doctor that uh, she has left her practice to be home with her children mm -hmm. because of pandemic. So she's completely out now. And many others have done that because of that. Uh, I, I believe with all the, with Amazon and Apple and Google and everybody coming, it's already happening. Probably you see it on TV every day, the news. Um, there's going to be plenty of jobs. And I think they still, they, they are now. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I see more and more, you know, when we around town in uh, Sanford, right. people are, are going back to work. Right. Uh, they're able to go back to work. Right. So you think we've turned the corner and I think we definitely future. have turned the cor corner. I had a, a, where I had breakfast, the, the owner told me today that he said I didn't have anybody out today. Wow. And, uh, and nobody's, you know, they're, they're all, he's fully staffed, mm -hmm. finally. Mm -hmm. But uh, so it's, it's turning the corner. Good deal. 
Let me talk with you about another hot topic, political maps. Man, the legislature sure was in the news a lot the last year or two on redrawing voting districts and so forth. Um, what are your thoughts on how those maps have ended up now? Um, th th what does that mean for our area? Um, how should we be redistricting? How should it be done? Well, you know, some say we need an um, independent, nonpartisan uh, commission. Let me tell the viewers something, uh, or the listeners, let's just say, and viewers, it's going to be on, on the, the uh, internet. The internet. Yeah. Uh, I've been in Raleigh 10 years, and I served four years as a commissioner. There is no such thing as an independent commission. Nonpartisan does not exist. I'm as, people know me here. I'm honest. That's, and, uh, and, but there, you're, you're either a Republican or a Democrat or independent, but it's hard to put a group together. I don't trust other people to do that. Uh, our, our Constitution, North Carolina Constitution, says the legislature does it. Mm -hmm. And so if they draw maps that people don't like, throw them out. Mm -hmm. But it, there's so much partisanship. Um, uh, so you just can't picture how you could actually select a body that is nonpartisan, independent. I got to tell you this. <laughs> okay. This is a true story. Paul Harvey. You All right. Paul sure. Harvey? We used to listen to him on the radio. Paul Harvey said years ago in the 60s, he said, we need a, uh, a committee to investigate Washington. Then we need a committee to investigate the investigating committee. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's the way it goes. Right. Uh, Everybody, I mean, you know, are, are, are passionate about their beliefs and the way things should be and uh, the way should, we should live and move and about. And, and uh, I just trust the voters a little bit more than some. I don't trust the nonpartisan. Mm -hmm. I don't, I just, I don't care who's on it. Okay. But I trust the voters to know how to vote and get rid of people that don't work or don't, right. don't represent them. All right. Are there any other, um, I'm going to ask you about a few more things, but just I'm going to give you an open-ended question here okay. to give you a chance. Are there some other things that you see as really important issues coming up in the next term in the uh, House um, and that, that you want to be involved in? Um, well, with all these, one of the most critical issues that I see on the horizon is transportation in North Carolina. Uh, with all those companies coming, and you see in, in Austin or other places, I, I, you go on 440 around Raleigh okay. at 5 o'clock or 8 in the morning to, for a couple hours, it's already bumper to bumper. Mm -hmm. And here we are with all this, th th these new people coming. Um, housing is, is a critical issue. Right. Prices through the roof already. And... Uh, so I th trans our transportation, we have got to get, I mean, we've got to get on the stick and because it's, it's, I mean, and it's all, it's, it's like it's happened suddenly. It's not like we, it's happened so fast. Mm -hmm. You know, you normally you see things, a storm coming, but sometimes it'll just start raining hard at one time. And I think that's what's happened when you've had these kind of, we have put our corporate taxes so low that, Companies are flooding in here, which is creating jobs, mm -hmm. and but it's bring it's going to bring thousands of people here. So the housing prices, I mean, there's a great positive and a great negative, and, and but you've got to you got to get this transportation, or if it clogs up everything, mm -hmm. you're in a mess. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Anybody that has to go around Raleigh, and I do occasionally. You don't want to be there morning and late afternoon. <laughs> And you most, just don't want to do it, man. And most less if uh, there's an accident mm -hmm. on you know, on, one the, on the loop or on US one, right? And you on that side of the, you're in trouble. And the overflow of that is coming on down toward Lee County and Harney County. Yes, it, it is. It term. is. I mean, the, ha the, the 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 prices are just of housing and everything. And uh, I saw a thing uh, about it six months ago where in Austin, you know, Apple went to Austin. Uh -huh. I think it was Apple, yeah. And the young man was about 25 or so. He had gotten a job with Apple. He was trying to find a home. 
he was 25 miles away from Austin and finally found the place, but it was 25 miles away wow. and the price had gone up 20%. Wow. And it's already, it's actually doing that now. It's happening here. Yeah, yeah. sure is. Wow. Um, well, you know, part of that growth, we're talking about this growth. Some of that has come because the state and uh, local uh, counties and so forth have also offered a lot of incentives for business and industry to come. Um, what do you think is the right role of the legislature in offering incentives, tax breaks, et cetera, to lure business and industry? Well, first of all, uh, the incentives really start at the local area, uh, like Sanford and Lee County. They offer incentives. And of course, the state does with, through Congress. Um, I've always said I wish there was no such thing as incentives, mm -hmm. but somebody somewhere started it. And, and the people came and the business came for the incentives. And so now if you don't do it, you're not in the game. But the, one of the safeguards that people are not, may not be aware of, there are stipulations in these incentives. If they don't produce the number of jobs that they said they're gonna do, uh, pay the rates of pays that they said they were gonna do, then they don't get it. So they're safeguards. So the incentive can be withdrawn if they Absolutely. don't follow through. Absolutely, if they do not come through. Very well. Different topic. You know that nationwide and to some extent locally, law enforcement and first responders have taken a big hit in public confidence. There's been calls to defund the police, uh, to set up uh, alternative policing organizations and communities. Uh, it's been a tough time for law enforcement. Uh, do you see it as responsibility of the legislature to help rebuild respect for policing? Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? First of all, I, back in the 70s, I was a police officer down in Goldsboro, North Carolina. I never knew that. Yeah, two and a half years I did it. And uh, uh, back then, you might have to fight somebody. They'd fight you. But today, they'll shoot you. Mm. And uh, the pay... Pay is a, the reason we're so short of police officers, 20% in Raleigh, I believe it is, about the same in Durham. Uh, I don't know how Sanford is, probably better. But uh, the pay is so has always been so low. When I was a police officer, three children, wife and me, I, we qualified for food stamps. But I would not uh, ask for them or go try to fill out the papers for them because I was embarrassed. And... Uh, and two deputies from the Wayne County Sheriff's Department would drive 25 miles to Wilson and buy their meats off of food stamps. Wow. Isn't that sad? And, and it's been a little better now, but it's still not what it needs to be. And when you see a police officer, thank them. I believe that if you pay the police officers better, you get quality men and women to serve that are not going to be on the news because they did something wrong or hurt someone. Uh, without cause. Uh, I was, the speaker and I were uh, primary sponsors on the rioting bill this year that uh, if you rioted and destroyed property, uh, you could be charged, if the felony went up to another level, and you could be charged, uh, make, have to make restitution to the shop owner or the business owner that you destroyed their property if they identified you. So so I believe in, I believe in law and order. I believe we should pay our there's some bad police out there. There was when I was a police. I was a police officer in Goldsboro for two and a half years, mm. and there were some guys that did not. There wasn't any ladies back then. There were, there were some guys that didn't need to be in uniform, and uh, a lot of times they get weeded out. And a lot of times, somehow or another, they skate through. But uh, anyway, I believe I believe that uh, if you get the right people, you won't have this news every day of, of cops doing something wrong. Mm. John, I can't believe it. We're already running out of time. Uh, we thank you for your time being here with us today. And on behalf of the station, we certainly wish you the best in the upcoming election. Thank you for your service to our state and our county. Um, and um, at this time, I just need to go ahead then and say that uh, I join in with Sand Hills Broadcasting and Brick Capital Video in thanking John Sauls for talking with us today. We're going to be taking a short break, and when we return, we'll be talking with North Carolina House candidate Malcolm Hall 
So stay with us. We'll be right back after a word. 